somebody says it this way. God is more sky than we can see. He gives us more seas than we can ever sail. So much sunlight we cannot bear it. So many stars we cannot scale it. So much breath we cannot breathe it. More yield than we can ever sow. More of His grace than we can ever comprehend. And last, more love than we can ever know. He calls Jacob and he says to him, get up. You've got to go. You've got to be and you've got to do. And he got up and he went. What else could he do? Well, what is God calling you to do, my friends? What is God calling you to do? Certainly not a sin on a complaint. Some of the greatest complainers in the church, you know? They do. We are the greatest complainers. Nothing is ever right. Everybody is wrong but me. I've done it. God knows I'm tired. And now I need to take a rest. And I don't mind you taking the rest. But stop. Don't bother people who want to work. Don't get in their way. Let them be. Let them do. Open your eyes. Open your heart. Most times we get confused in our response to God. John told the following story. He says that the Amazon River is the largest river in the world. The mouth of that river is 90 miles long. And it says that it has enough water that exceeds the flow of the Yangus, the Mississippi, and the Nile River. So much water that they can detect its current 200 miles out in the Atlantic Ocean. The irony of all that is that ancient soldiers, sailors used to die in the midst of that much water for thirst. Ships coming from South America would come up close to them and say, what is your problem? And the captain of the ship would say, my soldier, my sailors are dying of thirst. We don't know what to do. Give us some water. And the guys on the ship would say, Sir, Captain, lower your buckets. You are in fresh water. You're already there. We're already in fresh water. We're already in God's hands. We're already in His power. We are already in His care. Why are we complaining? Why is it we, we have so little faith? It was true of those ancient uh, navigators. It was also true of the children of Israel. And it's true today of us as Christians in the world and especially in Bermuda. Yes, there's a recession going on. But we're going to roll up our blankets and say, Oh Lord, three years from now, Bermuda's going to be nowhere. It has always been somewhere and it always be somewhere because God is there. And God is in charge. I don't care what the politicians say. <laughs> we're in the midst of, you know, you can be poor in the midst of wealth and wealthy in the midst of poverty. And those of us who have been poor in our lives know what it is. Be rich with nothing. We can never be lost. I tell the story of the little boy who was like his grandfather walking one day and holding him his grandfather's hand. And his father's grandfather looked down and says, Sonny, where are we? And the boy says, I don't know, Grandpa. 
He says, after a while, he says, son, I think we lost. The boy looked at him and says, nope. He says, what? The boy says, nope. I'm not lost. He said, well, you don't know where you are. Or how far we are away from home. He said, I'm not lost. He said, I'm here. I'm beside you. And I'm holding on to your hand. Can't be lost when you hang on to his hand. Can't be lost when he goes, you go with him. Can't be lost when you taste up believing in yourself, thinking that you're so good and everybody is so bad. Recognize the fact that he'll call the good, the bad, and the indifferent, the, the good and the ugly, the beautiful, all of us. It's the kind of God we serve. My friends, the angels are forever with us, the rest of us. I close with this story. Minister was went to give a um, sermon, and the minister next to him said, I want to tell you about an experience I had in, in Mexico. He said, I was there to preach a mission and our van broke down. He said, we put the van up on, on jacks. And I got under that van because I wanted to make the repairs. He says, the van was up there and suddenly it slipped off the jack and began to crush me. And there I was screaming because of the pain. He said, my fellow workers all tried to lift up that van and they failed. And all I had to do was say, Jesus, Jesus, help me. He suddenly said, suddenly out of nowhere comes a little young Mexican lad. Walked up, looked over, smiled, and raised that man up by himself. And as he began to bring that man up, the others joined him and raised the man up so this man and said, thank you, Jesus. And he said, the minute I said, thank you, Jesus, he said, my pain disappeared. I looked around, he said, to thank that young man. And there he was. He was going down the road. He looked back. He smiled at me. He waved. And he disappeared. Never got his name. Didn't know where he came from. Had no idea where he was going. Tell me there are no angels watching over us. Tell me God does not encamp around us, those of us who believe in him. He never fails. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So my friends, God's called you to be. Be somebody. There's a West Indian uh, saying that says, please, be good for something. <laughs> Or else they will conclude you're good for nothing. God bless you on this day. May your angels watch over you. May you never lose faith in God. May you forever hold on to his hand. You can never be lost when you're with him. Because he's called you to be as well as to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.